Do have a seat, Margaret Catley Carlson. Good to see you. How do you like our fireside for our fireside chat? Where's the fire? The heat is in the room, I feel it. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> this session is called Unleashing Collective Action to Address Youth Unemployment. It sounds like you're, you're not going to take any prisoners in this conversation. Absolutely not. Margaret. <laughs> um, <laughs> where should we start? Opening the bottle. All right, well, you open the <laughs> bottle. I know that you have a pet peeve on, um, well, I open the bottle. Yes. I you have a pet peeve <laughs> oh, good. for gatherings where people come up with recommendations. Well, I, like every conference in the world, thank you, and every conference goer, I get very tired of people saying, we should, they should, they must, they do, you know, the, uh, without really being very specific about where the location of responsibility and activity ought to be, because there's lots and lots of shoulds and oughts and all the rest of it. Mm -hmm. But we really need to be a lot more specific about what has to happen. Margaret, you, you wear many hats, but in this particular conversation, what's your most important role? Well, I'm a member of the Syngenta, the, the board mm -hmm. of the SFSA, which is the Syngenta Foundation for Sustainable Agriculture. And so we're separate from the Syngenta Company, which is a very important co-sponsor mm -hmm. uh, of, uh, of this event. Uh, but I am on the board of the... Uh, of the foundation, and the foundation is an entity which is completely focused on small farmers, and that's under a hectare or two acres. Uh, so therefore, you're looking at the assets that such farms have or don't for don't have, uh, and trying to figure out what you can do to help them. Basically. It gives you a very big focus on income because that's what's needed, and what's income? It's a question of yield, market access and enough assets to be able to yield both of those. So when you're focused on that particular uh, entity, then what you do depends on their needs. I know you're going to be quite pragmatic in our chat. And the idea of making decisions and taking action is really important. Do you want to explain to us how, what you mean by that and, and how that happens? Well, over a 35-year period, uh, Syngenta Foundation has come up with some quite innovative ideas. Now, I don't even like that sentence because it sounds like somebody sitting in Basel, which is a very pleasant town, but somebody sitting in Basel has come up with a good idea, gone on an airplane and goes somewhere and tries to talk other people into adopting it. That's not the way that you get uh, successful developments. Uh, one of the things that uh, we've done, working with a whole variety of partners in the field uh, and very relevant to youth, is trying to take some of the risk out of agriculture through uh, a kind of insurance that comes when you add an extra shilling or so to a bag of seeds or a bag of agricultural inputs, put it on the cell phone, the policy, and the, then the company actually delivers on the basis of whether the rain uh, has come or not. And the rain is tested through the meteor tower and not through submitting a, a piece of paper. So therefore, that has spread to now being able to insure livestock, insure other things. Uh, so it takes the risk out of farming, but you can't put that together uh, sitting uh, in an office, you have to be working with telephone companies, with reinsurance companies, uh, with farmers to see what they're interested in, what kind of risk do they worry about most. So that's one uh, example. Another one is um, that all farmers would like to sell to uh, the best paying entities. The best paying entities are often supermarkets, but supermarkets are under great pressure to be able to identify their foods. And so therefore, we worked out something called FarmForce, which was a handheld electronic device that basically gave the history of the, this particular crop. So you know everything about this crop uh, because it's all in a handheld device. Mm -hmm. And so when it comes to selling these apples, these vegetables, whatever, uh, you've already got the, uh, the history there. So it can go into the purchase order and therefore will facilitate a problem which small farmers often have because the, the road to the supermarket is a long, long way away when the supermarket demands uh, real characterization of the product. So that's another very practical thing you can do, but you can't do it unless you're out there in the field as well. So uh, there's a lot of those. Um, a fun one? Please go ahead. Linking up with McDonald's in the Andes. What? 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 <laughs> well, you said the M words. Yes, the, in, this <laughs> in this forum, young people go in the front door. No, but um, 
Some of our people discovered that McDonald's in Peru was bringing in cucumbers, lettuce, tomatoes, as well as meat uh, and bread. And after a very long and difficult but uh, arduous two or three year process of uh, promoting a collaborative, cooperative approach, uh, scheduled planting mm -hmm. and standards, uh, it started to happen, and McDonald's liked it so much they picked up the idea and took it to another couple of countries. So, so, uh, so Margaret, this brings to me the, to the idea of you, you have to find the right players to partner up with. Yes, you do. What's your recommendation? Oops, I said the recommendation word. What would you suggest that you do in order to find just the right players? Well, when you s s turn that to a question directly about youth, mm. I would say that the best thing to start with is start with the, start with the idea that youth may be the doers in this that they may be helping you with the problem solving. I mean, one of the problems in Africa is seed and the real relevance of seed. You know, good farmers nowadays have special seeds for different parts of the farm. Uh, and they have got demand, um, demand-based seeds. Uh, in Africa, you tend to get the seeds that somebody was working on that's part of somebody's research project, whether they're CG seeds or, or, or the seeds that come off the, the, the package. We got used young researchers to say, how could we turn this into demand-based seeds so that it's looking for a particular series of characteristics to do the breeding for? And this doesn't mean GMOs. This means just what you do with plant breeding to get the best seed. All of those farmers, are, all those researchers are very young. This could change the face of research, uh, seed research in Africa. I'm trying to join the dots here because we, we said this talk is about unleashing collective action mm. to address youth unemployment. Mm -hmm. All of you, you've been saying some very wise words, but how do we make that connection? Ah, we did that in Bangladesh. Okay. Uh, very interesting because, you know, one of the things that uh, if you're my age, you remember is either you or your uncle or whoever had extension workers come to visit and they had all the wisdom of that particular area. Well, the extension workers, they're still there, but they're difficult, they're underfunded, etc. What came up with the idea of getting youth from an area to identify themselves and then be um, uh, accepted by the community to be trained in the, what the particular agricultural issues were in that particular area, and then to become a paid by the farmer per instance source of wisdom and expertise. So is that root rot or is that some kind of fungus? Uh, this is somebody who will know. This is somebody who will have the experience, who will gain it, who is a trusted partner right from the get-go, and who's paid by the community itself. So. Uh, Syngenta Foundation doesn't pay them, donors don't pay them. This is actually sort of self-grown extension workers. Now we've got about 50 of these in Bangladesh, and by the end of next year there'll be about 100 of these in about six countries. It's a very fast spreading model. So that is uh, very much, it employs the youth, the youth employ other youths, uh, and uh, it's really, and by the way, some of them are women. Uh, and uh, so, that the, so that they're revolutionizing the process of, uh, of, pr of producing and, and handing over information. Margaret, what's the most important thing you've said today? Whew. You might just be about to say it. <laughs> I hope so. What, what is it well, for this room to remember? Because we're wrapping up. Okay, I think try and find solutions and remedies that put youth in the driver's seat. And what that means, and I, you know, I think this is a great report, but it doesn't mean investing only in the tried and true, and it doesn't mean investing only in the sources that do good things that you know about. Mm -hmm. If what we need is mentoring, invest in people who are willing to provide mentoring. If what we need is financing for youth activities, say so in terms of who you're going to finance. This spends several pages talking about financing good and tried and true sources. I've got nothing wrong with that. I belong to and have worked with a number of them. But make sure that financing for youth is one of the things that actually gets in there. Uh, because you can't, you know, Einstein said, if you keep going down the same road, don't be surprised if you get to the same place. And uh, you, you've got to take some of the good advice in the excellent report 
and turn it into some of the mandated programs that have to start happening now mm -hmm. uh, from our Trident II players and from some new sources because there's some really good people out there. The, the Search for Solutions uh, sessions have come up with really good people who are talking about how to raise entrepreneurs, uh, how to motivate them, how to feed them, nourish them. So help them. Margaret Catley Carson, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. I think this might be the hardest part of our conversation, which is getting out of these very comfortable chairs. Ladies and gentlemen. You promised me two good looking young men. <laughs> Story of my life. Yeah. Margaret Catley Carson, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>